Hello guys, I am back with another video and I got some tea for y'all today. In today's episode, I'll be talking about John F. Kennedy and his scandals. This video will only focus on his messy life. John F. Kennedy was a hot mess and a terrible husband to Jackie Kennedy. He was a notorious cheater who thought he could do whatever he wanted because he was the president. This guy inspired another messy president by the name of Bill Clinton. But before I go any further, make sure to like this video, subscribe and comment below. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Disclaimer. I am not sure what is true or false in this video. I just find the information about a celebrity and make videos. This is not a biography channel, and it is just for entertainment purposes only. Please do not take any information from this video as factual. Thanks. John Fitzgerald Kennedy was born on May 29, 1917 in Brookline, Massachusetts to John P. Kennedy Sr. and Rose Kennedy. His father was a businessman and a politician, and his mother was a philanthropist and socialite. Kennedy had nine siblings, and he was the second oldest in the family. He participated in a lot of sports in schools such as football, swimming, and sailing. He also spent big holidays such as Christmas and Easter in Palm Beach, Florida. He also went to an expensive private school for boys. He was also a Boy Scout trooper. He also went to the same high school with his older brother in a prestigious boarding school in Wallenford, Connecticut. His older brother was a popular kid in school and JFK spent his school years in his brother's shadow. So he decided to be rebellious and cause mischiefs, an example of this was when he and his crew placed firecrackers in the school toilet and it exploded. He and his crew were given a nickname called the Muckers. JFK created the Muckers Club and it consisted of Lem Billings, JFK, and two other guys that also tried to move a pile of horse shit into the school gym. But the headmaster stopped them and they were expelled. Joe Kennedy was proud of his son for leading the group, but his real shame was getting caught and that he needed to learn how to fool people into thinking that he is a saint. JFK lost his virginity at age 17. He lost his virginity to a prostitute of ill repute in Harlem, and that's when his sex addiction began. JFK health started to get worse, and doctors suspected that he had leukemia or colitis. Lem and Kennedy were friends during their high school years. Lem had a crush on Kennedy to the point that he was writing him love letters on toilet papers. Kennedy shut down his advances but later gave Lem a chance. According to Lem, he stated that they had a sexual relationship, which involved oral sex. Kennedy believed that receiving oral sex does not make him gay, but just for sexual release. Deep down, Kennedy had feelings for Lem, and he introduced him to his family and later allowed him to move into the White House. Kennedy spent more time with Lem than his wife. They had to keep it a secret because they didn't want the Russians finding out about their relationship. People also stated that after Kennedy was assassinated, Lem went into depression which led him to develop drug addiction. After high school, he tried to enroll in university in England, but then he returned back to the U.S., then he tried to enroll in Princeton University, but then left after two months. He applied for Harvard University and got accepted due to nepotism. He was considered the outstanding personalities of the radio, screen, and sports world. He also began to develop interest in politics and graduated with a Bachelor of Art degree in government. While he was at Harvard, he traveled a lot. He traveled to Europe and the Middle East, meeting with foreign leaders and government officials. After Harvard, he planned to go to Yale, but that's when World War II happened and decided to join the army but he was disqualified due to his poor health, and he was given a membership to the Office of Naval Intelligence. After a while, he was promoted to lieutenant, and with that promotion came sorrow, because he was mourning the loss of his friends. However, this man fought for his country by showing bravery, and he was awarded for his service. After the military, he was working at Hearst newspaper as a correspondent due to nepotism, and he actually thought he could be a journalist. JFK older brother was the one that the family had hope of becoming president of the United States, However, due to his death, JFK was now given responsibility to make the family proud by becoming president. He started out as a House of Representative and then a Senate. In the 60s, he decided to run for president. His campaign was funded by his father and his brother was the campaign manager. He also had ties with mobsters by borrowing money from them to win the election. The Chicago mobsters thought by helping JFK, the administration would overlook their shady business deals, but they were wrong. JFK made his brother Bobby Kennedy track down organized crime figures and the mobsters felt cheated. Some say that the Mafia had JFK killed. With the help of his father, the Mafia, and his family, this man became the 35th president of the United States. JFK had the world fooled by showing this picturesque, good American patriot family. But behind closed doors, JFK was a hot mess. He was addicted to methamphetamine that was prescribed by his dealer, aka his doctor. He also gave methamphetamine to Jackie when she was suffering from postpartum depression. And if you want more information on JFK meth addiction, check out my Dr. Max Jacobson's video. 
The reason why JFK married Jackie was to please the public. A future president not having a wife would mean that he is homosexual in the media. So marrying Jackie was the smartest move because he was Catholic, beautiful, and smart. JFK always wanted to live the monogamous lifestyle and that he was going to have his affairs secretly. Jackie always knew about the affairs but just kept quiet about it. JFK emotionally manipulated her to always not bring up his affairs. Some people say that Joe Kennedy paid Jackie to stay in the marriage even though she was fed up. This next story I am about to tell you would allow you to give JFK the side eye. JFK was on vacation when Jackie suffered a miscarriage instead of going to see his wife. This man decided to continue to cruise the Mediterranean and a politician had to tell him to go and see his wife because it is not a good look for the public, especially towards women voters. This man was tone deaf when it came to marital relations. This man was a perfect example of a dusty man. This man slipped away from the military aide carrying the briefcase with the nuclear code to have a quickie. While he was in Paris meeting with Nikita Khrushchev after the Bay of Pigs fiasco, his priority was hooking up with one of Claude's girls, a high-class called Girl Ring in Paris. This man had at least 40 of 50 women during his presidency. Everybody knows that Marilyn and John Kennedy had a fling together. The thing with JFK was that he was into blondes and Marilyn was perfect for him. They met at a dinner party in New York and when Kennedy saw Marilyn, he wanted her. Apparently, he wanted to have a threesome with Marilyn and Jean Carmen. The problem with that relationship was that Marilyn got too attached to him and she actually believed that she was going to marry him and have his child. Also, John Kennedy disclosed a lot of government information to Marilyn. Apparently, there is a sex tape with him, Marilyn, and Bobby Kennedy having sex. What really ended the relationship was when Marilyn, high on Dr. Jacobson's elixirs, sang happy birthday to Kennedy in front of Jackie and the whole world. That's when John decided to end the affair because he didn't want the public to speculate anything between them. John also had an affair with Judith Exner. Judith was an ex-wife of Sam Giancana, and they had an affair for two years. She will come to the White House and provide service to him. John was also sharing her with Sam Giancana. She got pregnant with John's child, but she aborted the baby. He also had an affair with Inga Arvad, who was allegedly a spy for the Soviet. John's father had to break off the relationship because he feared it would ruin his political career. John and Anita Ekberg had an affair. He had an affair with Jean Tierney when she was married. Mimi Ford was an intern at the White House, and she lost her virginity to John F. Kennedy. She claimed that her and JFK did drugs together and he forced her to give oral sex to another staff at the White House pool, named Dave Powers. JFK had a one-night stand with Marlene Dietrich, according to her, she said that the sex was quick and cannot remember else happened. Mary Pinchot Mayer had an affair with JFK but was killed after his assassination. JFK also had sex with his secretaries. Their main job was to skinny dip with the president and he would take those two women. Priscilla Ware and Jill Cowan to Costa Rica, Rome, Berlin, and Ireland. More women began to tell their story with the president, such as Diane de Vegg, who had an affair with the president when she was 20 years old. She attended a political dinner and met JFK. They locked eyes and JFK took her back to his apartment and had sex. He also had sexual relation with Ellen Rome, who was a German spy. If the U.S. found out about him and Ellen, he would have been impeached. According to sources, Ellen would come to the White House, providing oral sex to him. When they are in the act, he would blab out state secrets to her. He has also dated women who were spies such as Mariella Navani and Susie Chang. JFK would use Secret Service to sneak women into the White House to have sex with. Dave Powers was tasked to find women for him to have sex with. Agents were not allowed to interrupt him when he was having sex, for example, he would have sex in the showers with two random girls. There is a girl named Pilar Rivera, aka Patty Montoya, aka Lana Diorio. Pillar was a Cuban agent who infiltrated the Carlos Marcello organization. It had been stated that Pillar had a history with JFK. Apparently, she had a negative sexual encounter with JFK. Pillar, a young girl, was in the sex trade in Cuba. Later in her life, she became an elite assassin for Fidel Castro, and she was taught on how to use guns, knives, and poison. She came to America to be a spy for Fidel, and she became a call girl for a club, and JFK was a member of that club. Many people believe that she was the one that assassinated JFK. It had been said that Pillar, Fidel Castro, Carlos Marcello, Sam Giancana, and Antonio Vecina were involved with the murder of JFK. They did not work together to kill him, they independently tried to kill him. They all did know what the other parties were doing, but they had one goal, which was to take down the president. Pillar was hired by Morello to kill JFK, but he didn't know that she was a spy for Fidel. Pillar decided to kill JFK by shooting him from her office on the third floor of Daltex building. She fired one shot that hit JFK in the back of the head. In 1985, Marcello stated, Yeah, 
I had the son of a bitch killed. I'm glad I did. I'm sorry I couldn't have done it myself. Sam Giancana sent hitmen by the name of Charles Nicolti and Johnny Rosalie. They were in the office right above Pillar in the Daltex building. Nicolti fired one shot that missed. Giancana sent second shooters by the name of Phil Alderisio and Richard Kane. Kane fired one shot from behind the pergola on the south side of Commerce Street in front of the triple underpass. Kane's shot went through the front windshield of the presidential limousine and hit Kennedy in the throat. Jimmy Files was the third shooter sent by Sam Giancana. Files fired one shot from behind the picket fence on the north side of the grassy knoll that hit Kennedy in the head. His shot caused Kennedy's head to explode. Herminio Diaz Garcia and Emilio Santana were two Cuban dissidents sent by Antonio Vecina, head of the radical anti-Castro Alpha 66 group. The two men posed as construction workers laying new flooring on the fifth and sixth floors. Building owner D.H. Byatt added the two men to the crew the day before the shooting, supposedly to do some finishing work on the fifth floor. From an open window at the west end of the fifth floor, Diaz fired one shot that hit Kennedy in the right shoulder. It has been said that Lee Harvey Oswald was an innocent man, and he was set up by the Mafia and the FBI, but he deserves his own video. It has also been said that the FBI did not kill JFK, but they did cover it up and not expose the true killer. J. Edgar Hoover did not like JFK, but he wouldn't go as far as to kill the man. Hoover had enough dirt on him. He had tape of him and Marilyn having sex together and could have just easily exposed him to the public. The FBI knew about the assassination attempt because they bugged Carlos Marcello's phone. Hoover told Lyndon Johnson, who was the vice president at the time, to treat it as a rumor and kept it a secret. This gave Johnson leverage to become the president of the United States. Hoover then spun the narrative and blamed it all on Lee Harvey Oswald as the lone assassin. The CIA did not kill Kennedy either because they could have killed him a long time ago. They could have poisoned him or let him overdose because of his addiction to meth. Overall, the JFK story is interesting because nobody knows what really happened. Who killed him because it is still a mystery today. I am not surprised that he had gotten everybody fooled during the 60s with the good American image. I also didn't like how his needs get in the way of things. There is a book called The Girl Who Shot JFK. It is a good book, but it is hard to believe that some information in that book is true or false. I don't want this video to be about bashing JFK because JFK really had some good intentions such as implementing equal rights for people of color and ending the war in Vietnam. Before I end this video, I also want to give thanks to Ashley Says So channel for giving me a shout out. It really means a lot to me. Let me know in the comments on who you think killed JFK. Please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe and share this video to Facebook, Twitter or any other social media platforms. Be back with another video. Bye.